Live Radio. Welcome to the show, everyone. <laughs> ah, um, <laughs> hi, Patrick. Hi, I'm kind of lost for words Welcome at back. the moment. And, oh, yes, yes. You missed me last week. I was uh, listening to no, you. I said it was great. Um, it talked was, to Debbie last quiet. week. And you were saying that was, you missed me. No, I didn't say uh, that. Near the end of the show, I I'm that. pretty clear. That's not what I said. I heard you those nope. words come out of your mouth nope. that you missed nope. me. Nope, you were delirious. And um, that you wished that I was back as quickly as possible no no because you missed me so much it was the opposite i said take your time i don't remember the take your time part it's okay i know you missed me patrick it's anyways just i was it. for just for all the people who had to suffer with naila by herself last week you know i'd like to thank you for still coming back this week and listening to the show mm-hmm. <laughs> it's okay I'll um, take a vacation. you're looking very You'll nice cry. today naila thanks what, you, thanks what happened you have a hot date later something no, did I you finally get a date that would be nice it would be nice to have a hot day later. Oh, okay, we, we got to no. put the word out there. Listen. So um, let's get on with the show. We have a guest yeah. sitting here and you're yeah. like wasting time talking Me. foolishness. Um, we have Melanie Durant in the studio. Hi, Melanie. Hi. Hi How Melanie. are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. Um, Don't mind us. This happens every week. Yes, uh, Melanie, can you talk into the mic for me, please? <laughs> yes, no stress, no stress. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Uh, Mel, you you've been you know in the Canadian scene for a little for a short time, right? Just a little, just while. a little bit, yes. Just a little, a little yeah. bit, and uh, you know, for for if you don't know who Melanie is, she is a, a singer. She's uh, an artist, an urban contemporary. That's what they kind of labeled you as. Yeah, labels. Who's you know how they? it is. R and B soul, a little R&B bit of hip hop, a little bit of hip hop, reggae, a little bit of reggae. Do it all. See, I remember the f- one of the first songs I heard from you that uh, I, I, was, I was driving and I was kind of bumping and it was Housework Make Me Sick. Yes, <laughs> my favorite song. <laughs> housework you. Makes Me Sick. I remember, uh, so I sure remember I driving and, and hearing that on, oh God, what was it at the time? Was it Flo? It was Flo. When, when Flo played decent music I back in the day. I used to sing it and my mom wasn't pleased when I sang it. <laughs> Nobody's mom was pleased. <laughs> Nobody's mom no, was pleased. she wasn't having it. <laughs> I remember hearing that and I thought, you know, I was like, oh, she's got a cool voice. Um... And uh, like, where did that song come from? Obviously, housework makes well, you sick. But, but you know, the inspiration for that, like, what's up with that? When I started writing music, like professionally, or before it was actually professionally, I started trying to. Uh, well, basically, I was cleaning my house, and I would put on my beats, and mm-hmm. I cleaned the house, and just it just happened. I was cleaning, and I was like, "This really sucks." And I figured, just write about it. <laughs> I just started, you know, humming. And I started singing that, and I was like, I need to write this down. Because I was actually doing those things. I was vacuuming, and I had a black carpet. And you know, a black carpet. Every little thing shows on there. And I had to vacuum it over and over. And I got one of those, I think it was a, not a Kirby. What's those ones in there that are trying to sell you? It's a lot of money. They're like, it has. The vacuum cleaner? Yeah. Oh, like a Dyson yeah. or something? No, no, I think it was a Kirby. Yeah. I remember they're like, those it has things. They'd come station. knock at your door and. <laughs> Space station, station capability. technology <laughs> and you know they really built it up and it was like over a thousand dollars for it the rolls thing. It on like, its own. But you yes. can you can go on a payment plan. <laughs> exactly, yes, to get this vacuum. I remember that. <laughs> they come the and they like throw could... dirt on your carpet and then try to show you you know nowadays yes. that's a yes, Dyson. and you're looking at them like you really just threw dirt on my carpet. You better vacuum it up. <laughs> that thing better be very good. <laughs> Housework would make you sick in that yes, case. Yes. So do you still have do housework now, or of you course. turn into a full diva and you oh, got no, no, you no, got no, your no. friends coming over to do your housework, no, 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 or no, 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 no. you hire? First of all, divas don't some, have friends. Some <laughs> that, that is the truth. <laughs> <laughs> is this why your friends are not calling you anymore? Well, you know, you get your local album <laughs> I'm and talking you turn from diva first-hand and experience. Exactly. Okay. See, Jake said no new friends. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so you you don't have, you have the maids come over. I mean, you've no. been you know you've been recognized and nominated for Junos and that's true. have that's lots true. of albums and lots of songs playing all over the place. You've been top one hundred in Canada and I don't know uh, you've you've had number five songs. Yeah, you on, shouldn't be on, doing your own housework anymore. On iTunes is the point. and all that sort of well, stuff. Well, thank you, but uh, yeah, I do my own housework and uh, <laughs> is that I your, still don't like it. Is but that your no. way of keeping in touch with us little people? Yeah, whatever. There's a certain <laughs> sense of satisfaction when you've done a job you know and it's well done and it's clean and you can you know run your finger along the baseboard and it's good 
I have some housework Patrick that you can't can do, do that. for me. I'm going to pass. Patrick can't do that. <laughs> I'm going to pass he on that He can't run one. his finger along the baseboard. And it's not, <laughs> That's why it's I'm, I, I'm, I'm trying to get her to come do some housework nah. for me. <laughs> you better just play the song and get it done. <laughs> Ain't going to happen. <laughs> I'll feed you. Oh, okay. After. You know what? That, that, that changes everything. It's true, though. He it, would. It, it'd feed you. He would. Get you, yeah, I get my housework done for free. It'd be good. Not Pop-Tarts or anything like that, Pop- right? Like, what happened to you? No, he'll go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I get a check. Worst case, he'll order you some food. Uh, Pop-Tarts. Oh, okay. Just bring your gloves and your apron and your... Uh-huh. Exactly. Yeah. To do the cleanup afterwards. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you went to Earl Haig. Mm-hmm. I know that's cool. We used to beat them I up did. in basketball. What? Back in the day. What? I was Northview. in the music program. You went to Whitney Northview? Yeah. Well, okay. They were kind of rivals back I in the day. I went to Jarvis. Yeah. But you know this that was Jarvis, Jarvis, that was wasn't that like last week? This Jarvis. No. Carpe diem no? deceives the day. <laughs> <laughs> we're not doing this. <laughs> that's not where we're going. With. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. That was awesome though. That was great. <laughs> Timing was on point. Um, okay, so seriously, can we get on with oh, Naila? Thought, stop distracting we were, oh, I'm us. Sorry, I'm sorry. With this, with this interview, we've got I'll her stop. here. We might as well. Do you want me to leave? I'll start I pick some leave. brains. You, you know. want me to go home? No, don't. Nah, you don't might as well go. stick around. I got nobody else to beat up on. <laughs> <laughs> Melanie's being nice, so I can't do that to her. Well, Melanie's she's, a thug, so she's you gonna, better not try. She's gonna come do my housework for me, so it's all good. I can be nice. Um. Okay, so you you've had a couple albums. See. And uh, you've done a lot of singles. Mm-hmm. So, you know, is the music industry, there was a time in music where, you know, everybody come and they put out, you put out a single and you put out an album. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, people have to go to the store and buy an album. Mm-hmm. Um, but things seem to be shifting nowadays where it seems to be going back to the early days of music where it was about the single. Is that, well, is that accurate? Well, because I'm just a fresh new spring chicken, I wouldn't know anything. Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? Yes, I wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Well, actually, honestly, um, I do like the accessibility, you know, when you get online and you meet new people and I can see where people are actually streaming from or, or contacting me from, it's like Greece and um, Ethiopia and Africa and places like I would never know. Mm. I mean, I know about them, but how would I reach them? Right. Yeah. Without, you know what I mean? Without social media and, you know, the online presence is really good. I mean, it takes a lot of uh, time being online and, you know, communicating with other people, but especially being an indie, you know? Yeah, yeah you do everything yourself. <laughs> you have to wear a million hats, which I don't mind. It's just time consuming. So, I mean, before you didn't have that, um, that contact with yeah. your fans like it is now. You so know, the record have, label would kind of do that oh, stuff yeah, for and you, you back do in nothing the day. But you do nothing but get in the limo, get on the stage, you know, sing your song, and go back to the room, start writing, you know, back mm-hmm. on the bus, back on the plane. Right. There's no real contact except for that's the, the, the connection with the from. audience. But that's true. Cause <laughs> that's why divas don't have friends. <laughs> <laughs> right? Crack the whip and mm-hmm. back in the plane. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I enjoy it, mm-hmm. but it's a lot more work. So it's a lot. It's a lot more work being able to, you know, as you were saying, staying connected with everybody and um, really driving your own ship. Mm-hmm. But has it? Do you think it the the advent of social media has made uh, your industry more creative? Do you think it's made it better, or do you think it's like where do you think it's taking things? Well, now there's a lot to go through, and it's. I mean, unless you already have existing fans, now you have to start from scratch. Mm-hmm. And and regardless of whether your music is good or not, I mean, people have to know you're there. Yeah. Right. And with social media, everybody wants to be a star. Like, where are the fans if everybody's an artist? Mm-hmm. Where mm-hmm. are the fans? Mm-hmm. That's really difficult. And then there's there's just a lot of content to sift through. Right. I mean, you can't just open up a YouTube page and just say Samir. You could, but who's gonna? You could, us? but Look. why are they coming to your page? There has to be a reason, a draw. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Listen, you put up two cats. You see those? Oh, those, cats. Those cat videos, <laughs> and they get like two million hits. I know because they're cats. <laughs> they don't need any promotion. It's like, oh, there's cats. Everybody loves cats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So your next video should be, you know, have to make sure cats. dancing cats. Yes, ball in. Doing housework. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so things like, like Spotify, mm-hmm. um, you know, we were talking earlier because uh, it's a good thing Jason mentioned that it, it was it was a hoax that uh, Jay-Z, apparently, it was a big thing all over the place that Jay-Z had sold 
uh, title to uh, to Google. It was going to get shut down and stuff like that. Um, no. There are a lot of artists who are who are sort of, who are sidestepping streaming services because mm-hmm. they're saying you know they're not getting paid. They don't feel that they're getting paid fairly. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you? What's your take on the whole streaming service type things? Well, you know what? It can be a good thing. It definitely could be a good thing. Um, I've used, I guess, Spotify, and uh, it worked out well for me, actually, so I can't complain about it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, It actually uh, drew attention to a publishing company, and then I ended up doing a commercial that was, uh, I think it was in the U.K., Mm-hmm. And cha-ching, I'm a happy girl. Yes, I am. Nice. Yes, I am. So I don't have any complaints about that. I mean, if Excuse that's your only thing. Excuse me while I set up my Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, I mean, there's the ups and the downs. And if you maybe, it's again, it's about having a draw to your page, to your right. music, um, building an awareness. Mm-hmm. I mean, if nobody knows, then what do you got? You got nothing, right? You, you got to promote and, I guess, right time, right place. Mm-hmm. That's hard too, but it, it's happened to me more than once. I don't know if it's luck or what it is, but it happens. So you too can do this, Naila. Set up your Spotify. There's hope for me. There's hope <laughs> for me. <laughs> Yay! So for you know, for people who are listening who may not necessarily be familiar with your work, like who are you? What would you say? This is a chance for you to wow, you know sing a quick song about who are you. Wow, that's, like that's a deep work. question. We yeah. know that already. I'm a singer songwriter, and uh, I love to cook. I love to write music. See, I don't have I to feed to, her then. She can I, cook. I, I, I can't really go. No. I'm, I'm, but can, I'm a connoisseur she, she, of food. She can cook after no, she cleans. No, but see, so you already, <laughs> already said it. What am I getting out of this? No, you already said <laughs> hold it. Hold up, hold up, hold up. The listeners already heard you. Yep. Melanie Durant's fan club will now be on you. Oh, boy. To make sure that it happens. Yeah, so so you were saying so. Yeah, I'm just a, I'm a lover like of cook. music. I'm a lover of music. I've always uh, been able to sing, and I've always sang for like kindergarten for show and tell. Yeah. That my teacher would say, "Melly's gonna get up and sing a song." And I'm like, "I am." So then I would, you know, and all the kids would sit there on the carpet and they would clap for me and they'd sing whatever, <laughs> you know, on the radio or whatever my mom was learning at home. Because uh, cool. my mom's always been a singer, also. Mm. And um, yeah, I started singing back up for her introducing her show when I was there, if it was a dinner show, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, it's just, it's for the love of the music. Nice. So there was no fear? Fear? Yeah, I like to stand up in front of people and... No, you know, no, you know. I have more fear now than I did as a <laughs> child. I did, I did not care, you know? But I, I do feel like if you don't have the fear, then something's wrong with you. Right. It's natural to, to get a little, you know, shaken, mm-hmm. you know? And then you get the adrenaline and you're like... Ah. <laughs> and that's exactly what happens. Yeah. yeah, and you feel good, and you're top of the world, and yeah. Have you have you had a show that didn't quite go the way that you had expected it to go? Oh my gosh, yes, I did. I was in New York. It was right after I got my record deal, and I was doing a show for uh, BET, and uh, we had a live audience and cameras rolling and everything. Don't you know? I forgot the words to my own song that I wrote. <laughs> I did. I did. I just went blank. Eyes went blank and uh, eyes all wide. Wait, and I'm there thinking, was this, no is, teleprompter? this is BET. <laughs> teleprompter? They're going to tell me my own words for my own song? They didn't even know the words to my song. So <laughs> just, just wing it, man. Nobody would I know. Did, I did wing it. I did wing it. And I, it, it, funny thing is, I, I think it was housework. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing something. I don't know what it was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Here every Thursday. Thanks. <laughs> Whatever. So yeah, that's awesome. What, <laughs> did anybody notice? Um, no, but I actually had some feedback, so I had to do the whole thing again. Oh, yeah, because it was a it was oh, a live, a live air. show. Yes, oh. it, 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 it was, was a live, live show. Audience. I had live audience and everything. Okay, but they said, okay, we're gonna do it again. Okay, so then I had to go backstage and come back out like I just came out. Like, hey guys, here I am again. for the first time. <laughs> I can say again because it's filmed, yeah. right? <laughs> here I come. Hope I remember the words. This time. Yeah. Yeah. Did you remember the words that time? Yes, I did. Yes, I definitely did. Oh, so so what people got to see uh, on TV was with the right words. With the words. Yes. So people and imagine feedback. if they played the wrong ones. I Ooh. know. <laughs> that would have been bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one thing that was good is that uh, because I've always been a performer and I've been on stage so many times, I kept going. Like, the show must go on. And yeah. Mm-hmm. They don't know my words. Exactly. I don't know my words. Clearly. So. <laughs> So whatever. 
Fake really it till you make you it, didn't. right? <laughs> okay, what was the, on the flip side of that, what was the best show that you did? Oh, wow. So, um, I've had a lot of really, really, really nice ones. I, I'm, I'm always about the vibe that I get from the audience, yeah. you know what I mean? And yeah. it's all about the love bouncing from me to them to them to me. Mm-hmm. So it's the feeling I get back. So, um, rec- actually, like recently or ever? Do you tell me? Whichever one. I really enjoyed the Montreal Jazz Fest that I did last year. Mm-hmm amazing audience like 5,000 people and they were all singing and just the the love in the it wasn't a room it was outside but the love that was in the area yeah. mm, beautiful unmistakable just magic nice and uh, it felt like angels were singing with me do you ever, you ever sing and maybe there's three part harmony mm-hmm. but it sounds like a choir everybody's yeah. singing with you and it's not necessarily the audience they could be singing too but there's just a roundness in the sound yeah. I'm getting shivers up my arm I'm sorry there's a roundness in the sound and you know that like God's with you yeah yeah that's my favorite moments in performing that's my favorite moment while performing yeah is that that connection that you yeah, make that with connection. the audience yes it's, uh, it's, it's kind of beyond words. It's priceless. And yeah. I think that's why certain people don't retire ever. Like the Stones, like they're never going to go. It's true. You know, they'll be wheeling their coffins out there and saying, the Stones, you know. <laughs> I mean, that's terrible, but you know, they're, they're Are they never close leaving. to that right now? No, I hope not. They're, they're wonderful. <laughs> In wheelchairs oh. next week. Yeah. <laughs> still be going though. Yeah, they'll, be going. they'll still sell out stadiums. Right. In wheelchairs, I'm right? convinced. So is that, the, is that the reason, is that the thing that kind of really motivates you is to be able to create that continue to create that connection with people 100 percent, yes i mean i i enjoy writing and everything and it's magic to hear people sing your song that you mm. wrote yeah. back to you yeah you know so that's a really great thing and especially when people know your song you can be like what's the words what's the words you you sing it come on <laughs> everybody <laughs> so, so hold on a second so are you, are you is, it, is that is that why it's a trade some, secret some patrick come on and some singers do that some performers they're it's like not news you know, They'd be like handing mic to the oh, crowd. You <laughs> thought they Damn just it, wanted to get you to participate. That's right, exactly. Oh. Now I know. <laughs> this time I thought, you know, they were just trying to bring the audience into The older the, the performer, the more the crowd sings. That's right. <laughs> oh my gosh. So you've worked with, with, with uh, some pretty awesome people. You know, you did some, done some stuff with Jay-Z and Chuck oh, and yeah. different people. Um, I like who, chocolate. Who would you say is your, uh, who would you have the most fun working with? Um, wow. That's a good question. Are you trying to get her in trouble? <laughs> <laughs> what if they're listening? No, she might, they, they might, after this, they might call up and say, I had fun too. And then the other ones will be like, Psh, don't call me again. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, um, I like the common situation, even though it wasn't, we weren't in the same place at the same time. Yeah. But... I guess my album had come out, and we were on both on Motown, and um, he had heard the song, which was where I'm going, and he said, I want to be on that track. So I didn't have to ask her anything, which uh-huh. was weird. They called me, and they said, um, Melanie, and I'm like, yes. They're like, um, an artist wants to be on your song, and you know, it's common, and he, he wants to know, is that is that cool? I'm like, give the man the song. <laughs> What's wrong with you guys? Are you asking, asking me? me? Why are you even asking me? <laughs> Give it to him now. Is that a question? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Um, And then while filming the video, we had a puppeteer Mm -hmm. in a big lion suit. And um, he was rapping as common. Of course, the voice was coming from the track. Yeah. But it just felt like the interaction between the lion and I was really powerful. Even though he's a big Muppet. But it was like, this is awesome. So that was that was a lot of fun, and the puppeteer was very professional. Yeah. He's actually the puppeteer from Co- Comfy Couch. He works the doll Molly. Oh, cool! Oh yes! Oh yes! Patrick didn't watch that though. <laughs> He's too old. I'm no, don't you don't that. know about I the comfy, me, you comfy know. couch. Remember, I me. You don't know about it. No, you were working. And what the comfy couch? Mm-hmm. So the lion scene was my favorite. Then there was the monkey in the car, and he was driving. <laughs> Same video. And um, I asked little X, who filmed the video, was uh, saying, Come in, uh, not communicate. He's saying, Interact, interact with the puppet, interact with the Muppet from behind the scenes. And I reach and I touch the Muppet's face, and his little eye pop off, and the man was like, Don't touch the puppet! I was like, I'm so sorry. We're like, Cut, cut, cut. <laughs> Somebody cut. <laughs> 
So he had to go One person is telling you, yeah. mess with the puppet. The other one's telling don't you, don't touch, touch the puppet. The, the puppet's eye popped off, yeah. So he you went broke to the puppet. hair and makeup. I did, <laughs> I did. But um, yeah, the, the guy was so great. I really felt connected right. with the animation. So That's cool. That, mm. that was my favorite. Very cool. Okay, so you, you don't have to necessarily name names, but what was your least favorite experience working with, like collaborating? with anybody that I don't like or the energy's not right yeah I haven't you know like if the energy's not right between you and a person then you just don't move forward it's like okay we agree we don't like each other right <laughs> although <laughs> honestly that hasn't happened so yeah okay. that's cool what did you like grow up listening to you said your mom used to sing too <clears throat> everything a lot of um old school Motown like I still listen to that now yeah you know uh Stevie Wonder uh, Tina Turner, mm. Gladys Knight, Aretha Franklin. You know, you go for the good stuff. Yeah. You know, and and even nowadays, when somebody wants to find something good or emulate something good, you go for the best and you right. reach back into time and find what you know. Because there's nothing really new under the sun. It's that people right. do the same thing over again. It's it's just how you do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Um. Oh, did I leave something out? Wait a minute. Also, Run DMC and <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. A lot of hip hop like, and stuff pause. like that. But, but yeah, like yeah. You, what about Common? You, didn't, you mentioned Common. She didn't mention Common. She I didn't. didn't I Common. didn't. A lot of stuff I I would listen to on radio <laughs> yeah. and I wouldn't know what it was. Right. Still to this day, I'll be like, I like this song, and they're like, That's so and so. I'm like, So I like oh, the song. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I, that's me too. Just like I don't listen to lyrics. I could, you know, if the, the beat is good and the arrangement's nice and the melody's hot, I'm not listening to the lyrics. I'm dancing until like a child comes around and then I hear the F word and stuff. It's like, whoa, whoa, that's bad. Like, <laughs> okay, we're turning this off, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, so then did you have like, sorry, did you have like a surreal moment when you, you got signed to Motown and you used to like listen to all of the Motown artists? Um... That would be, you know what, when I actually got signed, I didn't know what happened. I didn't know that I was getting signed. Everybody just started, like, shaking hands and stuff. And I'm like, is it lunch? You know? <laughs> are we, are we, I'm hungry. Are we going to go for lunch? So, I mean, the, yeah, it's terrible. And my, my manager, like, oh, me, shut up, shut up. You know? <laughs> we'll get you fed. Shut up. I'm like, okay. So um, the, the real moment when it all sunk in. Make sure in, the crust is cut off my bread. That, no, 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 no. Extra crispy, extra crispy and warm. And the cheese needs to be melted. Cheese needs to be melted. That's right. That's Oozing right. out. Yes. But um, the moment where it really hit me was when the album was being mixed. Mm. And Commissioner Gordon was mixing the album. And he was involved in Lauren Hill's project. Ooh. On the wall was gold records on his table. His console where he does all his work was Grammys. Um, on the also on the walls, Carlos Santana, and when I saw Lauren Hill, tears actually came to my wow. eyes, mm. and it was just a power. Oh my gosh, you're gonna take me back there. It was a powerful moment where I felt like I'm in the right place. Yeah, yeah. This is where I'm supposed to be at this moment right now, and this man is mixing my album. So that that was the moment. Very cool. Wow. Okay, you can ask your question now. You know, you may, yeah, you may <laughs> get my question. Mess you know. up your vibe. I'm just, so just sorry. Just I just flow. I just, you know. She does this to me. That's it, why you like I'm having me the here. What do you do in the afternoons at 2 o'clock? Spin it around. Do I do? Yeah, what do you do at 2 o'clock? She's not replacing me on the show. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't even get it, though. She's I did like, it. Like, what, do you mean? what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I didn't get it. Over the head. Um... There's a lot of conversation that's going on right now <laughs> about the state of music today. Mm -hmm. um, wherein, you know, I, I, I say this, I was driving with my son, my, my, and he's 12 in like a couple days. What? And um, I know, am I getting biggie? You're getting old. <sighs> Let's not go there. Um, it's all the gray, gray hairs that you're causing me. Me. So continue. Uh, we're we're in my car driving, and he's he's got a few stations that preset for him, mm -hmm. you know, and he's going from one to the other trying to find something to listen to, and like he went through three stations, they were all playing the same song at the same time, Ooh. and um, part of the reason why iLive exists is because we're doing what we can to 
there's so much good music out there that nobody gets to listen to on mainstream radio. Right, it's, it, truth. it's almost like it doesn't exist. Um, and so, as a as a as a, um, an indie art artist mm -hmm. trying to get your music out there, so people can actually hear what you're playing, mm -hmm. what you're singing, what, hear your heart. Because as an artist, you're putting your this is you're exposed. You're putting yourself totally. Into, into into your art mm -hmm. hoping that you can connect with somebody somebody will connect with with your spirit mm -hmm. right you know what do you think about the way things are going right now because it seems like um it's it's more about what's being pushed to us mm -hmm. as opposed and saying you know this is what's good this is the the thing that you need to be listening to versus this is actually good mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said this is actually in the G. I thought the, another word was coming out. <gasps> oh, sorry. But <laughs> so there's a lot of uh, yeah stuff being force fed to us, and we're like being brainwashed with what they want us to listen to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't really see a lot of R and B soul anywhere anymore, mm -hmm. and it's like it doesn't have a place on radio. I mean, like real R and B soul that like. They're not yeah. worried about is it how many BPMs are, is it? Right. Can yeah. I play it next to whoever? You know, yeah. the so, track song. Yes, yes. Um, I actually. Uh, do you remember when BLK? We used to get BLK. Yeah. And how many of us would listen to BLK? You and still get that in Scarborough. Do you? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're so lucky. The Quiet Storm. Yes, yeah. right. Yeah. And and. Um, I think that's why I ended up with so many kids. Uh oh. <laughs> TMI. Okay, so moving on. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Come on. What's happening? I'm not the only one. I know it. Jason, you, 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 you don't know about Nobody the call in story, to discuss but. this topic. We are not talking about this any further. <laughs> moving on. It's a matter. Every, anyways, go on. I would like to hear. I would, I would like to see it go back to what music really is and what feels good i mean there's nothing wrong with the stuff going on now but it shouldn't be we shouldn't be limited to it you know mm -hmm. and and the kids nowadays like these generations coming up they should definitely be able to listen to mm -hmm. stuff that touches your heart and moves you you know i mean i'm a fan of the weekend he mm -hmm. sounds really like this his stuff is beautiful yeah. i actually saw him at the junos and um his band was warming up and they were me like I was in the back. I was like, "What is this?" It was the song from the movie. Oh right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and I could just kind of hear it in the background, and then it got louder and more powerful in the strings. And I was like, "Whoa!" Yeah. His voice is beautiful. It was though. so I good. I love his voice. And I think the best part about that experience for me was his band came up to me after. They go, "Oh my God, are you Melanie Durant?" <laughs> and I was like, "You guys know who I am?" <laughs> <laughs> this is the best. I was like, "Are you guys American?" They're like. He is. I think there was one guy or two guys who was American. The yeah. other ones were Canadian. But they were like, you're Melanie Durant. I was like, I certainly am. <laughs> and I told them they were amazing. And the yeah. performance that The Weeknd did was really beautiful. And somebody actually had pointed out that he sounds a little bit like Michael Jackson. Yeah, I was like, he does. Yeah. You're right, totally he has that does, vibe. but I didn't catch it until yeah. somebody pointed it out. I was like, whoa, totally missed and that. And so when I saw him performing on the Grammys, I was like, hey, you have that thing yeah the michael thing yeah, yeah he does. anyways um like i was saying like i really enjoy that and uh certain other things but i just want to see the music turn around a little bit you know and make way for say the neo souls and the mm -hmm. you know the old school soul kind of mm -hmm. motown sound i do see people trying to recreate it yeah you know and some of the stuff's really cool mm -hmm. some of the stuff's really cool and some of the stuff isn't quite there and they're just kind of trying Mm -hmm. But there are people who are amazing, but yeah. who would know? Yeah. yeah, Who would know because somebody else is shutting them down? So right. it's like, oh, so I guess, I mean, it could be our personal project to go look them and find them, you know, and find where this is coming from, who's actually doing it, and post to our own page, check this out, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But other than that, I have no idea what to do about that. I don't I think, think it's something I could single-handedly do. No, but I think that's the <laughs> well, advantage to... <laughs> exactly. You're Melanie and Iraq, come on. <laughs> That's the advantage to social media, though, right? Is that they have a platform, but mm -hmm. it's just, it's like you said, there's so many things to sift through. How do you find exactly who you want to find? There are some songs, and, uh, you know, my son being a producer, I've had conversations with him about um, this, this kind of analogy where there are some songs, they're like, 
um, they're like a firecracker. Mm-hmm. They're here, bang, it's banging. Yeah. You, know, you, you hear it and you're like, oh, this is great. But then a month from now, you're like, I can't take that song anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then there are some there that are kind of like a light bulb. Mm-hmm. They just have this longevity. Mm-hmm. They just sit with you in time and they capture your emotion and your feeling. And anytime you hear that song, it, it teleports you back in time to that feeling, that emotion that you had. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's, it's got this longevity about it that is almost undescribable. Mm-hmm. You know, how, what's your take on that? How do you create something that has, the, like when I, when I hear, you know, this first song we were talking about, Housework. Housework. You know, when sense. I hear that, it, it reminds me of the first time I heard it, mm-hmm. you know, because it was different. The, the vibe of the feel of it was very different and it kind of creates that, that type of feeling. You know, as an artist, do you go into it thinking, and I, I feel like today, most of the artists kind of go into it thinking, I, I, need to, I need to make this, you know, this firecracker right now, but then it's gone mm-hmm. and it's forgotten. And then, but then they kind of miss, you know, the prince, you know, the Isley brothers, you know, yes. the, they kind of miss what those artists bring to the table mm-hmm. that 20 years from now, 30 years from now, they'll still be playing it. That's amazing that you brought that up because I've always strived to make what I call timeless music. Right. If, mm-hmm. if you do what's going on right now, by the time it's mixed and mastered and everything, it's old yeah. it's already done you gotta definitely connect with your music connect with the song and when you sing it you don't just sing the words you don't go through the melody you sing it from your heart mm-hmm. so you're putting your emotion into what you're saying so you really mean it and if you really mean it when people listen to it they can feel it yeah it comes whether, out whether yeah whether that's something they're going through or and they can connect with it that way or they just understand you at that moment because you meant it you mm-hmm. know there's the, the cookie cutter thing where you're just kind of doing it, spit out the words, okay, I sang it right, or it was out of tune, but they fixed me up with auto tune or something, <laughs> whatever your thing is, do you know what I mean? But it, it, it's not something you can connect with. But then there's also nowadays, um, our attention spans aren't as, as long as they used to be. I was told that nowadays people have the attention span of a goldfish. Oh boy. And it's due to the social media and you know, you're looking at something and it's That's like, not flip, very flip, good. Flip, flip. It's not very good That's at all. Terrible. It's terrible. But <laughs> with the fast so pace and you know, everything going on nowadays and the social media and the access to it in your pocket all the time. <clears throat> yeah. That's yeah. where we're at. We did a show. My mom actually did a show, and she said, what's going on? She goes, everybody was on their phones in yeah. the audience. So she went out into the audience, and she sat at the table with them, and she sang right in their faces, and they put the phone down. They put their, All of them put their phones down, and after they're like, that was the best show I ever saw. It's like, because you were present. you actually saw You it. were in the moment. You put down the phone. <laughs> you know? You put down the phone, and you looked. Even to record a show, and you're there, and you're recording through the phone, it's not the same. Not, you're breaking that connection you're by holding up that camera. Yeah. So true. I've actually tried to make a conscious effort to be in the moment and be present when in a situation that I want to, you know what I mean, really absorb and be in the moment. Like, say, at a concert or something, maybe I'll take a picture, mm-hmm. you know, but then the phone goes down, the phone goes away. I want to be there. I want to see. I want to feel that connection. Yeah. Because there's nothing like it. It's true. How's your mom really influenced you? Oh my gosh, I'm her mini me. Like she's <laughs> she is the the artist that I look up to. She's never done anything but sing and perform and she's still going, you know? Like she, she does a well we do, a Tina Turner, Donna Summer and Diana Ross and the Supremes tribute show. We do a lot of casinos and corporate parties mainly in the states. And they don't like when we say at the end we're from Canada because they thought we were from there. <laughs> Just at the moment where they're like, yeah! I was like, say it now, say it now, Mom. <laughs> I am Canadian! <laughs> it's the best! <laughs> and then we close with the drums and a, yeah, yeah, yeah! <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a little, like, uh, kooky here. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's my mom. Her... She has been in every situation on stage. Like things get thrown at you when you're in a live show Mm -hmm. and it's how you deal with it. It's nothing you can rehearse. It's nothing that you can expect. It's just things happen Mm -hmm. and it's all in how you deal with it. And I have never seen a performer like my mother ever. 
Mm. I've seen so many things happen, whether it's like you kind of, uh, maybe you get tangled in the mic cord or you mm-hmm. trip on the mic cord and it's all in the recovery of it. It's the prestige of you as a performer, right? Right. Mm-hmm. right. Like for example, one time, um, she's gonna kill me for saying this, but one time we were- <laughs> We'll pretend we didn't hear it. In a theater <laughs> and uh, she went in the audience and she fell. Ooh. She fell. And the whole thing is, the band kept playing and everything, and I think the song ended. The song ended, but they were looking at me, and I was right on the edge of the stage, waiting, because I was like, should I go out there? And I know if I go out there, like, then everybody knows she's hurt. Okay. Right. Clearly she fell, and um, what am I going to do about it? And the guitar player looks at me, and I look at my mom, and I look at him, and I look at my mom, and I could feel, we have this weird connection thing, we don't have to talk, it's really weird, but I could feel, I knew she, she was like, don't you dare come off that stage. Don't you dare come off that stage. She did something with her hand, cued the, the piano guy. Mm-hmm. Spotlight hits her. First I was afraid. I was petrified. The audience lost their minds. I was like, oh my gosh, you're such a G. <laughs> 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 and everything was fine, you know? But it was like such and a moment. Everybody just thought that's a part of the show. That's right. It was like, well, it wasn't as brutal like when Beyonce fell down those stairs. But like my mom was on stairs and she <laughs> fell. But she kind of like, yeah, she just kind of went down, not trip, bump her head, roll and ouch, all that. Stuff. Ouch, ouch, Yeah, but Beyonce is pretty uh, G also. She yeah. handled that really well. What was the most embarrassing thing that happened to you on stage? Um, I don't think I've had that moment happen yet. No. Knock on wood. Is this wood? No, I hope so. <laughs> I sure hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you released an album last year. Yes. And um, what was it, what, in putting that album together? What was it that what was that process like for you? Really, really cool because every other time I've done music, I pretty much write by myself. Mm-hmm. Um, so I actually hired writers, and uh, yeah, we wrote <laughs> together, and um, it was really good. They were really experienced. I learned a lot. Um, they were really like sweet, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, and it's hard to say they because it's like, okay, there was more than one, and every situation was different. But mm-hmm. they embraced me mm-hmm. definitely in each different situation. They embraced me, and uh, it was just I, I, I don't know what to say about it except for it was a really great experience, and it, it, it it's cool. I would totally do it again. But this one wasn't. You did this on your own, right? Like it wasn't through a, a label. label. No. Cool. How was that different? Um, well, like, there's not a bunch of people telling you what to do. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, my manager and myself. I mean, he did say no to certain things. He's like, no, Mello, no. And I was like, oh, but I really like it. No. I was like, okay, <laughs> okay. You know, like, but sometimes you no. gotta step up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> sometimes you gotta, like, take creative criticism yeah. and, you know what I mean, and let people have an opinion you yeah. know mm-hmm. but it's like choose your battles but as the artist you're kind of in it right so it's oh for sure to have someone else around you to say for sure uh, 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 that one like if work. i'd have been left to my own devices 100 percent, i would have had a totally different album mm. definitely a totally different album mm. but the thing is when when it came when push come to shove and i was really passionate about something then i was like no <laughs> no did you do it like that too i did <laughs> yes no <laughs> For those who are just listening and you're not watching, (laughs) the finger went up. Yes, the (laughs) pointer finger, the pointer finger, let's be clear. The the neck thing. The nectitude came out, yes. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, so so the album came out, Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, how's it been embraced? Very well, actually. Um, I'm surprised, and uh, surprised maybe is not a bad, isn't the greatest word to use, but I am surprised when people come up to me and they produce my album Mm -hmm. and they're like can you please sign this for me and they get this excitement that it's like you can't buy that like that genuine excitement and you know i mean you could buy the album that's not what i'm saying i'm saying you can't buy the excitement the passion the realness that comes off of somebody who's a fan of yours and Mm -hmm. who genuinely loves you Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and loves your music and appreciates and respect the effort that goes into it. And you can tell when they're they're listening to it and they're they're cherishing it and they mm-hmm. produce it from their pockets or their purse and they get a little blushy and they're like, I really love this. You know, could you could you please? Yeah. It's like, please give it to me right now. I'm going <laughs> to sign that right now with a big Sharpie. You know, 
It's, it's great. You keep yeah. a Sharpie in your pocket? In, your in my purse. Yes, I do. <laughs> nice. So you're not like, okay, so that'll be 100 bucks? No. She might do that to you. Though. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you don't even want to feed her when she cleans your house. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, so that connection that, that uh, you get when people come to you, and uh, and and they recognize you, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I'm assuming there's a certain amount of validation that you feel. No, from, right away I feel work. embarrassed. Right away I feel embarrassed, which is strange. Like I was in, I went to Jamaica for a wedding, and um, there's like the wedding party was there, and the guests and whoever and whatnot, and we're all sitting at breakfast. And most of the time on vacation, I don't put on makeup. Like I want to send tan and, and whatever. I might have some eyelashes on, you know. I'm, Lip gloss. Man, we were talking but about lashes makeup earlier. And lip gloss. I got a question for you. For me? Yeah, for you after she finishes oh, her point. Man. Okay, so we're sitting at breakfast and I'm like bare faced and I guess the groomsman and, and the the best man and the groom. I'm I'm eating my breakfast, right? Not even I'm not thinking anything. And they said something about Oh, and blah 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 about your music. And I've been hanging out with them for days. They took pictures of us all on the beach. And then it came out that they knew exactly who I was and they're you, fans of my music. You thought you were hiding. And at that moment, <laughs> I totally, like, I was like, oh my gosh. Oh, they I just never... saw the real vacation me. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> no makeup. They took my pictures. I'm like, oh God, it's going to be on Facebook. It's going to be on Facebook, you know? But I think they just was were looking for the opportunity to let me know that they are fans and stuff. And then when I got home and I checked my Facebook, they had been on my page the whole time. Like oh, they, wow. I was like, whoa, whoa! That, that it felt really powerful. But right away, I felt embarrassed, mm. and I felt like I didn't have my game face on. Mm. Although I always try to be myself. I mean, who else are you gonna be, right? right? But I mean, there's a certain, you know, you sit yeah, a little you sit taller up straight. and. <laughs> Try to act like you're not five foot, you know. Put on a little blush. Yeah, right. You're right. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, that was that was weird for me. So that that was that was my moment. Has your music been embraced? Um, wh- where has your music been mostly embraced? It's been Canada. It's been Europe. It's been um, that's a the good US. question. Uh, Europe. It's a little bit everywhere. Mm-hmm. I'd like to say Toronto because this is where I'm from. Um, but you know what? I'll have to check my Facebook when it shows me where everybody's looking from, and wherever that needle's hitting the highest is where <laughs> where my main fans are from. <laughs> but uh, actually, more in the states too that I didn't realize. Uh, Philly, mm-hmm. and uh, I don't want to speak on it when I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. just trying it's to run good. through my brain. I was shocked when I saw Greece and Ethiopia and and you know Africa and. Uh, Czechoslovakia. I was like, really? What? Whoa, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. They don't even speak English in Czech Republic. Well, obviously they speak Melanie Durant. No. Japan, <laughs> even Japan. There you go. Yeah. Cool. Wow. Um, artists like The Weeknd, Drake. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, they've kind of, in some ways, they put Toronto on the map, mm-hmm. musically wise, mm-hmm. um, because wow. everybody's kind of, you know, it's not like we haven't been on the map for a minute been on the map for a while now actually but, yeah. uh, <laughs> um, you know for artists like that who are getting this international acclaim all over the place um, how do you think that that's helping the music industry in, in, in Toronto well what's really cool is that they're putting Toronto on the map big time as a collective right now with the <clears throat> Drake the weekend Justin Bieber like Canada in general yeah. they're at the top of the charts and now yeah. Alicia Alyssa Clara mm-hmm. yeah. Alicia yeah. So, yes so I'm, that's great. I mean, but also because they now radio has that option to play those, was it four artists? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What about CanCon? Because they're like, okay, the hottest songs right now yeah. is CanCon. So they can go right to the American artists right. now. So, I mean, it's going to depend on which station and what they're choosing and what their mentality is. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think it's cool. I think it's cool and I feel proud. For uh, all, all the... The new artists that are looking to try to break into the market so that they can be heard, what would you? What kind of advice would you give them? Um, if that's what you love, follow your heart. If you're passionate about it, follow your heart. Mm-hmm. But when you put your performance out and you you're in the studio, 
bleed on that record. And I don't mean with blood, I mean with your heart, with your soul, like put it into that product. Because like I said, there's so many people out there, there's so many artists out there, people trying to be artists, and it's a matter of what's gonna make you stand apart from everybody else. We've talked a lot about, um, you sort of gave some insight about some of the artists that you listened to when you were growing up that kind of in inspired you. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the younger folks that are coming up today, it seems like they're somewhat disconnected from the history of It's music. true, which is why I'm gonna go back to listen to the real stuff go back to old school motown listen to stevie wonder all that stuff is timeless music and can play today and still connect with people and still touch your heart and your soul gladys knight stevie wonder marvin gay tammy Trell, you know like the, the supremes diana ross is amazing mm -hmm. number one she is not the greatest singer mm -hmm. but it's not about that it's about how she relays the message mm -hmm. it's kind of like Jay-Z, when he said, and I wish I never met her at all. <laughs> you know what? Even though he hits that note and the note is like, what was that? What key was that in? It's like sideways. But he meant it. So yeah. it's like, boom. <laughs> it's powerful. You know? That so. was the perfect rendition. That was funny. <laughs> So Diana Ross knows how to connect with her audience. She knows how to tell a story. She's, She's got the it for factor. Sure. That's yeah, right. She and the perform. thing is, Mary Wells is a really good singer but she's not the front person right you know and she can be mad for eons if she wants to be yeah. but she just wasn't the right person to be the first to the the lead supreme. yeah wow yeah so that's an interesting that's an interesting observation because a lot of people would kind of look at it and say you know the 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 best singer mm -hmm. should be the one in the in the forefront nope nope it's the best performer hmm Yep. So just keep that in mind, eh? <laughs> just, yes, Are you yes. talking to me? Yeah, I'm looking at you, Nayla. <laughs> oh. You know, it's not the best singer, you know. It's, it's the best performer, so make sure you... I'll remind you of that yeah. when you're recording your album, When I'm Patrick. doing my album? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well. Just do a video recording. Uh, you know what? I might just do that. Do a YouTube you video know? so they can see your It'll performance. It'll be in my poetry, but it, 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 I'll just... Maybe record it. You do poetry? Yeah. yeah. Mm. His book's yes. actually pretty good. Really? It's the one time I'll give him some hold credit. On, hold on His book is actually that really good. That was a compliment. Good. Yes, what? it was in your it's direction. The only compliment me. he will ever <laughs> 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 Yeah, pa it's called, you know, Soothe My Soul by Soothe Patrick Morris for those who want to, you know, go on Amazon and chapters and whatnot and go pick it up. Mm -hmm. um, but the... You know, you're talking about the, the connection that you make with the audience mm -hmm. and that, um, I don't know, I don't even know what to call it, electricity that Energy. sort of bounces back and forth. Mm -hmm. That is, it, like I've had some people who've come to me and they uh, send me messages or um, who, who I'll meet and they're like, you know, I, when I read this poem, it connected with me in such a way that um, you were able to v sort of verbalize how I feel. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to s say it. I didn't know how to, I, I know what I was feeling, but I didn't know how, have a clue how to describe it. But what you did, uh, what, you've, what you wrote, really highlighted those feelings for me. And being able to hear somebody say that, it's just like, wow. You know, you get that, that I don't even know, what would you call it? describe it. it. You know? It's yeah. endearing. It's, and it's, it's it's something that you can, I don't know. How it's do like just a, it's just a fulfilling moment. It's yeah. just yeah. one of those, it's like, I was just writing this in my own space mm -hmm. and then you find out that someone else is in the same space as you or someone else mm -hmm. felt the same thing you were feeling. It's like... And you feel honored also. Yeah. 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 It's, like, yeah. it's like, whoa. It's really humbling. Yeah. Okay, so That's we got like seven minutes Patrick left. Patrick looks like he wants to cry. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, that only happened <laughs> once on this show. <laughs> And Did that it? was you, I you wasn't remember, here. You were you, you weren't He's here. Like, I missed it. You were yeah, you were here. <laughs> I was when, here when we were interviewing. Oh my gosh, what's her name? Is uh, the oh, heart transplant? That's right. He cried. It's she, true. Th her, this woman's story was was. It's true. She was such a, to me again, such a eh? kind she, soul. She was mm. such an amazing soul. Um, she she had received a heart transplant. and She was basically giving a message to the family um, of the person who died, oh. so that she could live. Oh. 
and uh, it was it was like so powerful. But it's kind of it kind of ties into the same thing, right? It's just it's that connection, like that connection you make with people, however mm-hmm. way you make it. It's like it's it's an mm-hmm. unforgettable thing that happens. Yeah. Nice. So what's next for Melanie? Um, I'm about to like start writing a new album. Yeah. Just about to any minute. Any minute. Any minute. Very cool. Without a pen, like bam, <laughs> and then we start it right up, you know. <laughs> yep. While she's cleaning her house, <laughs> I'll just write it with a sharpie on your walls. <laughs> <laughs> they they might lock you up for that. <laughs> but they or you, <laughs> somebody might see. He'll rat you out. You know, they come in and they see all this writing on the scribbling on the wall. They're mm-hmm. like, mm, she that's crazy. a new song. The writing's on the wall. Right. Or an old song. I'm sure they've done that. Yeah, um, <laughs> do, Destiny's do, Child. <laughs> so your 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 last album was last year, mm-hmm. and you're starting to write your next album. That's correct. Um, do you like put a timeline and say I need to get it done, you know, by by this date? Yes, and I needed to have it done by six months ago. <laughs> but <laughs> but you know what? I mean, I've written stuff for it. I've got a bunch of stuff already done. But I want to just keep going and choose the best of the best. You know, I mean, sometimes deadlines get away from you, and and that's not a really good thing, but it's a real thing, and it happens. And there are things that prolong your project, like the mixing and the mastering and, mm-hmm. and the schedule of the person who's able to mix and master and what other albums they have on their plate. But if you want the guy, the guy is busy because that's what he does. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there's setbacks and whatnot, but I got to sift through what I got, then my original plan of what I wanted to do, and sometimes things change. Yeah. Sometimes you get an, an ex, I mean, a inspiration, mm-hmm. and you kind of, like, the idea curves a little bit, right. like, you know? So How do yeah. you get your inspiration? It would depend. It depends mm-hmm. on, like, what I've been through, mm-hmm. what's going on in my life, what what I've seen, what my girlfriends tell me. The girlfriends that I do have, you know, because there's no new friends. She's not a diva. <laughs> she's not a diva. She has friends. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, things I've seen. Sometimes I like TV, you know. Sometimes I'm watching stuff and I'm like, oh, that'd be a great concept for a song. You yeah. know, and then you elaborate on it. You incorporate things that have happened to you or, you know. So, yeah, it, it just depends. True. I know. I know. With uh, with writing, there's there'd be times I'll be driving and I'll hear a word on the radio, and it's like, oh, I gotta write that down. I gotta, mm-hmm. pull over, I gotta write it down. It's like, okay, yeah, I, I'll figure that out later. You ever wake up with a song or like lyrics? Yeah. Oh yeah. Like in the middle of the night, I wake oh, yeah. up in the middle of the night, and it's like, oh, I gotta write this down. I keep and a I'm pen like, and Where did like that a book beside from? my bed for that reason. And it's like, oh, okay. I had a dream when I was in vacation on Jamaica, a separate time from the wedding, and I was singing this song that it was my single it was such a big hit that it like everybody knew it and I was on stage singing it and I was about to receive an award and at some point I realized I was dreaming and my brain said take the song because there was an actual song playing my brain Mm -hmm. said take the song with you when you wake up take the song with you wake up so I started to wake up and I was singing this song and singing this song and I was awake and running around my hotel room trying to find something to write this song down. And I remembered, no, you went to Jamaica to relax and you didn't bring a tape recorder, you didn't bring a pen, you didn't bring anything. You'll never do that again. No, because I was actually, I brought the song from the dream. And doesn't yeah. that sound crazy? No. I brought the song yeah. from the dream. Oh, I understand. No, it doesn't sound crazy. Okay. <laughs> That's good you guys understand me. <laughs> Just but, the two of us understand what yeah, you're talking about. Yeah, it's okay. Songwriters everywhere understand you. I had to calm myself down and lay back down and say, if it was meant to be, it will be back. You will remember. Because I did take it from the dream, woke up singing it, and I had to calm myself down. Yeah. But I was actually shaking mm-hmm. because I was so excited and then frustrated and, and yeah. then nervous about not being able to write this song down and catch the melody. Mm-hmm. I can tell you that song has not been back. <laughs> <laughs> not yet anyways Ouch. yeah but that's that's the thing though yeah. like in the, in that moment in time if you if you don't capture it mm-hmm. it's you, gone it's gone it's true mm-hmm. it's happened to me it's like it's like a moment in time that doesn't ever come back and then i'm mm-hmm. just like come on song just come back yeah down <laughs> to the the melody pattern no, down everything, to the rhythm down everything's to the, gone yep uh so we've for the last uh what is this 58 minutes we've been talking with Melanie Durant. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Are you tired? We can keep going, but you know, the next show that's going to start in like two minutes. We can go. 
uh, you know, Jason may not be happy that we're running over time, <laughs> eating up his time. No. Um, it's been a pleasure having you, you here. It's uh, it's been a lot of fun. Um, I'm gonna you know look forward to my house being cleaned. <laughs> um, you better find how do, how do on you, YouTube. How do people reach you? Uh, on Facebook through so, through social media. I'm on Instagram. Uh, you can come to melaniedurant.com and drop me a little message there. Uh, yeah, just reach out, reach out and touch what somebody. Pay. Everybody, make this, this world, world a better place. place. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we. <laughs> yeah. You sounded like okay. <laughs> okay. Oh boy. Um, how much time we got, Jason? We were like out of time, right? Um, oh, watch the time. Finger. We I, have I time. Careful. <laughs> Careful. We have one. some time left. <laughs> a minute and a half. A minute and a half. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Jason. He, he kind of keeps us in track here. And if we, Cracks the whip. He, exactly. I get it. I get it. No, he'll just cut us off. You'll just oh. hear that. <laughs> <laughs> the commercial will start playing. And, and then, just and hear, then, I and live that's, radio. That's, <laughs> that's basically it. Um, housework makes me sick. Yeah, housework. I'm so sure of it. It's it, like I'm allergic. <laughs> yes, I'm on that same flex. Well, it's been wonderful being here. Thank you so much for having me. Anybody listening, you can check out my new album online. It's available yes. on iTunes. And it is Melanie Durant, and it's called Anticipation. Check out MelanieDurant.com. Nice plug. She's good. Yeah, I know. She. I think she's done this before. <laughs> if I'm sick, you can come in and replace me. If you're sick, huh? Any day of the week. <laughs> What did you say? Two o'clock? Two o'clock? Yeah, two o'clock. every Sunday. Two o'clock. Next week? Oh. <laughs> and make, uh, make sure, now that you kind of know who Omar is, make sure you, uh, you know. Check, check out the concert. Check yeah. The concert. Check it out April online. 23rd. I'll send you some more details about it. If you, if you haven't been paying attention to my oh. Facebook feed, oh, I'll send it to you. Okay. And then, you know, you can come check it out. Um, Thank I you. Think it's going to be awesome. A lot of the VIP stuff has been sold out already, but I think there's going to be another round of some kind of other VIP thing that's going to be happening. Okay, so I'm getting the wrap it up thing from Jason over there. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We will be back next week, and uh, have a great the Sunday afternoon. The best internet radio station <laughs> around. I Life Radio, the new social the network. <laughs> I Life Radio presents Omar in concert. Omar returns to Toronto for the first time in over a decade. A unique and celebrated recording artist, Omar has influenced and inspired a generation of his peers and beyond. Backed by a hand-picked ensemble, he will be gracing the stage at the Capitol Event Theatre on Saturday, April 23rd. Opening performance will be none other than soul legends and Toronto natives.